First introduction, then objective, experiment, result discussion, conclusion, and future. That introduction. First, I'm going to explain a little bit about the work, just one page, and then later I can explain one by one. First, this work is about lead antimony. Lead antimony is used in different industrial applications like cable chip and uh, soldering, battery grid, and many, much many. We can make the lead antimony alloy by ECAP or gravity casting. But if you have only piece, if we have, for example, some application like the bullet, we need the continuous rod, we can use the continuous casting. So first, I want to ensure if we can make this alloy by continuous casting procedure, because continuous casting have the lots of advantage. For example, if you compare it to the other metal, like for example, drawing, you have a less process, you have a cheaper capital investment, and you have a zero percent scrap rate. Because if you make by continuous casting, your your final product not good, you can chop, melt, cast again. But for the drawing or the other technique, you have to sell as extra. That's why this, this economy is much low. This is the first objective. I want to work on continuous casting. Second is about the alloy. The lead is so soft and they have not much tensile elastic. It's even 15 times less than steel, about 10 times for copper, 6 times for aluminum. So the question would be how we can increase the tensile elastic if we need some application with better tensile elastic. And of course, alloying elements, with adding the second alloy, we can increase much better. That is the uh, the goal and everyone knows. But which kind of alloy you can add to the lead? You can add this one thing to me. But if you want to make the two times increase for the tensile elastic, you can use 20% distance, 5 percent and 1 person to me. So one person to me that is reasonable to instead use instead of things of this soft. But how many percent you can usually use the antimony to the lead? Just one to three, because if you use more, it affects the electromechanical and electrochemical properties. So that's why my work is about, if we go back to the first, my work is about lead antimony, 1.25 percent continuous casting. So as I said, the first goal is check if we can make this alloy by continuous casting and 1.25 percent that is explained. And the second, look at the <clears throat> alloy element procedure and what's going on for the certification, what's going on with the tensile So I will explain both objectives one by one. In order to do that, the first I get the samples, one lead, one lead antimony, all, as you see, there's the same casting procedure. Good distance, dual, acceleration, deceleration, and speed. All same. One is lead, one is 1.25 percent. This is everything the process same. Identical. Just want to know how it's different. <clears throat> this is the tensile test according to estimate standard get the samples. This is the instrument machine and calculate and get the three samples to the average. Then, in order to look at the grain structure, we've done the metrography procedure, mounting, grinding, polishing. And because lead is very, very, very soft, we cannot use the coarse grinding paper. We should use the very fine. And we have to use the polisher with almost quarter of much of the face because it's very soft. So, the last step for the metallographic is the etching. So now, we made the etching solution with this material, as I mentioned, and you can see the samples after etching. So, so that is the etching of lead and the antimony alloy, which means the total lead alloy, much different to the others. But usually, for example, use the copper or aluminum, any, 
can use the your actual solution, for example, for the copper, you can use the nitric acid, something like that, and then you can clean, dry with water. But for lead, we should clean, dry with higher strength nitric acid, like 70% concentration. That is the trick to metallography of the lead. If anyone interested to look at the grain structure of a lead, you should use this trick. And this is the material. And we can use the hydrogen peroxide, at least 30% concentration. You can use the acetic acid and the You can have to use your make own etch solution to do this last trick. Because the lead metallography very, very difficult. So I uh, had the SCM machine, Joel, to look at the structure and the uh, possibility to find uh, anything to interest. Now I'm going to explain the result. As I said, if it add about one person onto me, or five percent team, or twenty percent of this team, we can increase the tensile strength of a lead alloy about two times. This is something like this. That is all expected. But the elongation is also a three times less. So the question would be why two times? What's going on? Just one person? One person, you can find this much significant difference. So, and also the fracture is different. Totally with ductile with necking, this is less, like you can see, much different than the fracture. That is also go back to the structure. And uh, <clears throat> to ensure what's going on, I did the good metrography, and you can see the very nice picture, very nice grain structure. This is lead, this is anatomy. The question would be, what's going on for the anatomy? We have some particle, and we have grain difference. So, of course, anyone can understand the grain that is smaller, and we can see the some spots. So I'm going to explain why, what's going on. First, I did the planimetric method, draw a circle and count the grain inside and with interface. Same, interface, grain inside. I'm putting the planimetric formula and the calculate. You can see lead, lead anatomy, average grain size, and the average grain pen per square millimeter. You can see the grain is smaller, much smaller. So, I'm going to have some theory and explanation. Why? What happened? We just add only one person anatomy. What's going on? The first, that's a homogenized lead anatomy. You can see the influence. You can see the finer grains. That's why we have more space for heat dissipation. Later, I'm going to explain the phase diagram of lead, and uh, we can have discussion later. You can see the more space for the precipitation. That's why we expected to have an anatomy precipitation. It's a rage phase. And also, smaller grain have the larger area of the grain boundary. Everyone knows that is the basic of the matter of science. That's why it's increased the nucleation size. And have a more, much more greater chance for dislocation to stop the grain boundary with a smaller grain. So just one person on Tomedy have the, this much influence. So I'm going to explain the, my experiment based on the SEM. As we can see, the similar to the photography which is done with the optical microscopy, you can see it's very clear, just only grain. We can see the different lead antimony. We can see the antimony up here. It's lead antimony. And uh, zoom in, it's a one particle, and you can see the antimony up here. It's just a matrix, you can see only lead. So, based on the result, matrix is only lead. And the darkest part is the bridge of uh, the second alloy element, which is antimony. And also we can just confirm. So as I said, I'm going to explain about the phase diagram. Can you see this is the phase diagram of lead antimony? If you look at this, the precipitation like this is 
if you have a lid contains 0.44, like here, 100 degree, you have the uh, uh, free dissipation. But my alloy was on about 382, and it was 1.25 percent, almost one 300 something like there. That's why we have we have and too many reach in the matrix of lead. And uh, the conclusion, as I said, I had the objective to produce this alloy by continuous casting, which done. It's no problem, you can make both lead and lead antimony by continuous casting, no problem, nothing. The only thing is that we understand the tensile can three times, two times uh, increase, and the elongation three times less, as we expect and we found. We investigate by various tools. Metallography, look at the optical microscopy, look at the SEM, we found is a bridge wise and homogenized solution. Also, a bridge drain size that also shows the grain that is smaller by blending a trick metal. And uh, also, I explained the lead was dark dye making, and the uh, phantom is still dark dye, but it's less than the pure. This is very interesting to the moment. So, as a future goal, I'm going to check. When we add more personal terminal like that, or any other, you have the, any hands on the electric car conductivity? That is my future work in the next step. That's my reference. Uh, question. Just